одоо тэнгэрт байгаа нарыг ингэртэй зүгээр ирээ гэж одоо юу юм байна даа. Тэгээ бас багаа явж очих дэмжин. Тэгээ таны карьер таштай төлөвлөгөө юу аа. Аа явуулчихсан Монгол сайхан шууд одоо ерөөс хөдөө орнууд хаалт байла. Одоо 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 ингээд хөдөлгөө орж байна даа. Сайхан байна. And uh, last year, the government spent a whole year to try to reduce number of licenses, bureaucratic procedures, to make it business friendly. So, uh, uh, on the terms of uh, uh, governance, as I said, is parliamentary democracy, and uh, uh, and we spend enormous amount of money, more than 20, 30 percent of budget on education. Uh, education expenditures are very high. So every child is entitled to elementary school, um, to, to high school. Uh, now we are giving uh, grants to university students. And, and we are not rich country. We are, uh, we are still a very poor country, actually. But we are spending enormous amount of money in education. And uh, uh, I think in 20 years, we will manage to re-educate most of our population. And now we have. Uh, a lot of people who studied in Western countries, and even more so, in even those who can't go abroad will be uh, able to learn uh, international education because we're introducing Cambridge standards, a test of, let's say, a universal system of standards, uh, which is usual for Commonwealth countries. So, uh, so in a way, it's going uh, after the Singapore model, let's say so. It's an Asian country, but different from Singapore, that we are parliamentary democracy uh, functioning one, let's say so. Uh, so, uh, so it's very uh, a mix of different things, very dynamic, and population is mostly very young. And uh, these young people have enormous ambitions, which we think is a good idea. Yes, and probably similar to you. Um, so I think that having these ambitions is a very good idea. And uh, moreover, we are trying to create conditions for them to realize those ambitions. And we believe that the future is with us. And um, all these efforts which we've done to strengthen governance, uh, education, at some point have to give some feedback. There should be a result. If there is no result, then, of course, <laughs> it will be very hard for us. But already now we're seeing the results of economic boom and we believe that it's going to continue for next at least 50 years because these resources which we're putting on the market are so big that uh, even exporting all of them will take at least half a hundred years. And the market is there because nearby we have China which has enormous needs so we can supply China but we can supply also all Asia Pacific. We're just tapping markets in South Korea and Japan. and. Uh, this is only just regarding minerals. Another is a possibility is tourism. And uh, uh, here in Mongolia, we have thousands of artifacts of old history, which are extremely interesting. And uh, just tourists can get, not get there because of infrastructure. And third one is uh, uh, interestingly agriculture. You know, the whole world is moving to um, clean bioproducts, let's say so. 
uh, food which doesn't contain chemicals, food, uh, meat uh, which doesn't contain antibiotics, um, food which is natural and healthy. And uh, it's interesting that all our food is just like this. We don't use any kind of chemicals. We don't use fertilizers. Everything which is grows, grows naturally. And uh, we're just taking it for granted. And uh, it turns out that now that the whole world begins to value it. And uh, recently we've been booming exports of meat to China because now the rich Chinese want to eat uh, healthy food and it comes from here. And similarly, for example, if you compare vegetables grown here, because this land has never been touched much, it's never have been any chemicals put in there. So it's, it's just purely natural and the taste is, you cannot compare the taste of vegetables which grow in here with those which you grow in China, we see all tons of chemicals used. And similarly for meat, you know, for meat in Germany, for example, there is so many um, uh, uh, medicine put in the meat that if you have an allergy to some kind of medicine and you eat a steak from German meat, not all, from all of course, but <laughs> sometimes people get allergy of this medicine because of this high containment in the meat. Uh, but there is nothing like that here. So maybe at some stage this clean uh, uh, food product will be in future a good export opportunity. And some al already uh, very uh, smart, I think, businessmen from Korea, for example, coming here and begin to grow vegetables uh, in Mongolia. And uh, you know that uh, after mining, actually, the another its largest reserve is this land. Different questions. I'm actually quite surprised that besides all, all these natural resources, you are not energy independent. You still don't have any refinery in, in a you know, landlocked country. That's quite surprising. Which are your plans to build some refining capacity within your country? The other question related to that one um, is, you know, you, meaning the people of Mongolia, owns all these natural resources. Uh, that's fantastic, but at the same time, if it's really you, the government, um, exploiting all these resources, there are very little room for the private sector. And the government can grow way too much. And I'm really not in favor of giving people cash, because that's not meritocratic. Uh, people don't uh, like to work if you get free money. I'm pretty much against that. And the main problem with free money is that when you don't get it, you get very angry with government. So uh, just some thoughts, so if you want to comment on that. Uh, but our oil has two distinctions. One is that it is very heavy. One which is located close to, to transportation routes. Uh, it uh, has a lot of uh, paraffin uh, oil, uh, so it's very heavy and has to be in actually warmed up in, in winter to get out of uh, soil. So we used and uh, actually processed that oil uh, 40, 50 years ago. But uh, when the light crude oil uh, deposits in Siberia come in place, it turned out that economically it wasn't much uh, competitive compared to Siberian oil. So at that time, government decided to mostly import the light oil from uh, Russia and oil products and just let this uh, heavy oil be inside of the wells. Uh, but now, last uh, five, six years, exploration again restarting. So uh, right now it's on exploration stage and when it will reach production reach uh, stage at some time. So we are already planning to build an oil refinery at the time. So plan is underway. Uh, another uh, deposits of oil are located in the eastern part of Mongolia, far away from any kind of transportation infrastructure. Transporting that oil uh, takes a lot of costs. So we're now exporting mostly that uh, oil by um, trucks to nearby Chinese uh, cities. Uh, it's even, still it's cheaper to do that than bring it to central Mongolia and to uh, process. But now a private project on processing oil uh, in Eastern Mongolia is also underway. So um, from within three or four years, we think that one of these projects will uh, go ahead. This all a private project, so there's no government intervention in that. Um, number two is that um, 
on the government uh, inter interference into the economy and size of it, uh, it, it, it's not that we want to government to do anything, everything, uh, but unfortunately because this mining revenue grows at such high speed, we increasingly find it necessary to redistribute it, to, to in reinvest it, even if we don't want that. For example, for this year, I think the budget was planned to be with deficit. It turned out the budget has a surplus of almost one uh, million, uh, billion dollar, and you have to spend it. Because if you don't spend it, it's uh, it's also uh, it's not good for for business, and it you have to do that. So it means that like 50 percent of GDP has to be redistributed by government. So uh, so this is uh, I think will take will will continue for some time. But in the principle, our principle is that we want to government to have less weight in in the economy. So that's why we last year there was a year of business reform. Uh, trying to, to reduce the red tape and so on. And number three on cash transfers. To be honest, uh, we're also not very much fans, fans of it. But show us a way in which you can uh, make sure that the fruits of mining revenue come to every citizen. And it, it's enormously difficult task. By constitution, this belongs to all people. So it means that all people by law must somehow benefit from it. So, um, uh, so and, and we face democratic elections. Yes, and uh, uh, the voters will ask, okay, you have the uh, multinational company doing this one. There is another multinational which is uh, taking out this resource there. Uh, they all pay taxes. Uh, how do I benefit from it? How do I personally benefit from it? And uh, if you do not have a way to personally deliver some kind of uh, shared fruit from it. Uh, so the common good actually is, is not the best also idea, unfortunately, because you build a road. Okay, the people who live nearby can use it, but it doesn't reach to those who live high in mountains, for example. So that uh, boiled down to this uh, cash transfer system and housing vouchers, because it uh, means that every citizen has a benefit and actually a real benefit from uh, the mining. Now, I've been to Kazakhstan and Russia, two countries which similarly very rich in resources, but never do that. Uh, Russians do not do cash transfers, neither do Kazakhstans. And what they told us, that when we, they heard that we have such a system, they were uh, very much uh, astonished, uh, uh, astonished uh, and they said that, you know, that we didn't do that because we believed this will create inflation. But look at us, we have inflation anyway. And, and we didn't give anything to compensate to the citizens, so basically they are uh, less uh, well off. And in Russia, when uh, Russians come here and hear that the government gives uh, 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 mining revenue to every citizen, they, think that they say that we, Russia, enormously rich in oil, but we never got even one dollar from that. Everything goes to either large companies or some uh, oligarchs who own those deposits. So, so you have just two ways. I don't know which one is better, to be honest. Either way, we don't, give, uh, we don't want to give anything for free, of course, because it creates lessiness and so on. But if there is any other way which is better, please tell us. And the Alaskan Fund does distribute about 1,000 US dollars to every citizen of Alaska, beginning from 1982. The Norway Fund keeps the money abroad and uh, Potentially, you can use it. In Singapore, they have this central providence fund in which you keep money all your life and then can withdraw. And we think that at some stage, uh, we will also move to that stage where this money can be kept in individual accounts. We can draw out for health, maybe for education, but rather maybe not cash. <coughs> and beginning from next year, the problem of cash transfers will no longer be uh, in place because by law on, on fiscal stabilization, the cash transfers uh, will be forbidden, will be stopped beginning from 2013. So we, so far we have distributed about one something billion US dollars to every citizen of Mongolia. And I think from next year it will be more into this account systems or whatever we have to review that uh, human development fund system. Thank you. In the remainder of the year, which is Amen, but that's
let's say, uh, gets done uh, $1 billion in a $7 billion economy. Uh, the challenges are many. They are, we have seen that the West has its own vices. Maybe it's some yeah, device. So uh, taking different best elements of different economies of different countries, Chile and oh, oh, interesting. Okay, okay, thanks. So I'm the, I'm the China thing. I see. Okay. Oh, okay. that's okay. that China will take over the country in uh, 20 years. You know what he said? He said the same question. It's not so bad. Not so bad thing that to take over economically by bigger powers because there will be constant demand. So, with that remark, I just want to open. Just this. occurs to me. So, if you have 30 television channels and the bulk of them are politically based, um, surely you have the most boring uh, television in the world. <laughs> um, is it actually entertaining? Is there entertainment, or is it just pretty much politicians saying, "Please vote for me in four years' time"? Well, please. Over that point, we do not have any intellectual property. We have intellectual property laws, but we do not have any uh, content that has a license in the country. So most of the TV stations based as a uh, brought over family to every, they cover everything. However, they do not have a lot of entertaining programs on the TV station, which is because that is because we do not they do not have a fund to p create a great program or admittedly, even our TV station do not have the educated people who can provide that kind of entertainment. So to solve that, I, I think in my opinion is that we need to work closely with intellectual property and closely with uh, bringing in uh, contents, licensed contents into the country so programs can improve and have a better quality. Well, thank you. That's the entertainment. We used to have uh, all-time Mexican serials once upon a time. No any press, nobody knows I'm here, etc. And he came to Ulaanbaatar Hotel. There was a huge crowd. He so got angry and he said, "Totally, the guy and said, look, sorry, Richard, this is not for you. This is for a Mexican couple who is a man. Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what is about uh, series and uh, intellectual property rights. And that's unfortunately happening nowadays. Very fashionable thing is Korean movies. Oh, now everyone, our young people are dressed like Koreans, even walk like Koreans. <laughs> a little bit, because here in this country we have more you know, masculine, you know, horseman, this type, and this is disappearing. So my point is, again, intellectual property right. Please, uh, our public TV, tell us about this intellectual property right issue, the problems you face. Well, actually, uh, for, for, for the mainstream media is, is really the new media. And, and that will be what will pressure the mainstream media in many ways. And, and we see that in China with a much more controlled mainstream media needing to catch up with social media. And the most recent example would be the, the train crash in China. And you know, the, the, the mainstream media initially